want to bring in now a special panel. We have two guests who have been with MSNBC throughout our coverage of the war, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine Bill Taylor and retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, who served as the director for European Affairs for the U.S. National Security Council. Welcome to you both, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us on this. Um, you just kind of heard Ambassador uh, Richard's take on the war um, in Ukraine throughout um, the last year. There were so many fascinating things that he, he pointed out um, to me, really, in the short time that we spoke. One, of course, describing the way in which Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine as this kind of naked um, aggress aggression. And the ultimate kind of goal is really eliminating everything that is Ukraine, something that he has been unable to do um, up until this point. What is it going to take for the Russian president to stop? Desmond, he's going to have to be convinced that he cannot win. He's going to have to be convinced that his military is unable to overcome the Ukrainian military. He has to lose on the battlefield. And he's been losing on the battlefield. He's been losing one after another uh, of the cities that he's that he's taken and then lost because the Ukrainians have pushed them out, just as Richard described. So when that is clear to him, that he cannot win, uh, then this will end. Uh, until then, uh, he will fight. But Richard's exactly right. The Ukrainians will never stop fighting. It's interesting you say that, Ambassador, because I want to play for the both of you um, what you both said um, as this war began just a year ago. And then we'll talk on the other side. Frankly, it is not too early to assess uh, the early state, the, the way this is unfolding, whether the Russians have achieved their day one objectives. And I would say that the Russians have underperformed and the Ukrainians have overperformed. It's not a fair fight. Um, the Ukrainians uh, have been on those on those uh, battlefronts for eight years. Um, they're hardened, but the but the Russian army is clearly superior. It is going to be enormous. Mm. Um, so it's going to be brutal. It has been brutal so far. I mean, much of what the both of you said has remained accurate throughout the last year. I think, though, many people have gone on the record in saying that they certainly overestimated the power or the organization skills, really, of the Russian army throughout the last year um, and underestimated the abilities of Ukrainian forces on the ground and their dedication to winning. Um, Alexander, if you could respond to what the ambassador just said, because I find it interesting that it's going to take the Russian president to understand he cannot win in order to back off. I mean, I think some would assess that right now he cannot win. Um, that assessment has already been made, and yet he continues to push forward despite the in intense amount of losses um, his own military has faced. Sure. I think the, the issue here is that Putin steeped in World War II history, and from his narrative, he believes that a long war actually suits him. In reality, that's a false narrative. Uh, it's the side that uh, conducts the surprise attack that gains momentum in the early stages, uh, that achieves its political aims immediately, that wins. In this case, Russia failed to do that. And and, and throughout the rest of the, uh, this past year, Russia has faced major setbacks, uh, major reversals. He thinks that over the course of uh, several years, if this continues that long, he will be able to break the resolve of the West to support Ukraine. He'll break the resolve, the will of the Ukrainian people. That is a false premise. And what's going to end up happening here over the course of the next several months is that Russia is going to conduct uh, another offensive and it's going to burn through its uh, effective combat power. And eventually it's going to run out of the military capability to continue to try to advance, at which point the Ukrainians are going to take the initiative. They're, they're actually maintaining the initiative now, but they'll switch the offensive and start liberating territory. Once Russia starts to lose significant territory, and we will see that probably in the, the summer or by the summer, maybe as late as their fall, that's when he's going to be convinced that he has to negotiate to preserve whatever gains he has, mainly Crimea. Uh, but it very well may be too late to negotiate at that point. The Ukrainians may no longer be willing to negotiate uh, and will press the advantage and liberate all of their territory. So, so, Ambassador, it's interesting. So now we have, once he feels as if he has lost, once it seems as if um, he is losing territory, he will have to be brought to the negotiating table. So much of the analysis, I feel as if we are hearing, is based upon the fact that we are dealing with a logical individual. We all know Vladimir Putin is not a logical individual, and he wants to win really at all costs. I want to read for you an analysis from the Washington Post, Ambassador. I want you to react to it if you can. 
um, writing the U.S. needs to ramp up military support to Ukraine not to kill more soldiers, but, quote, to convince Russia's dictator of the futility of his military only when the Kremlin grasps that victory is impossible, that it cannot hold sovereign Ukrainian territory seized illegally. Will negotiations be possible? I just keep asking myself... Um, when he actually has these conversations, how, how self-aware is Vladimir Putin that he has these conversations with himself to understand the futility of it all? So, Yasmin, I've not met President Putin. Um, and I, I don't know him. I've talked to a lot of people who have studied him. No one says that they know him. No one knows what's on his head, in his head, as you just asked. But he's not crazy. He's not suicidal. Um, um, he, he he makes decisions based on his own logic, which is clearly different from our logic. Um, but he, you're right, and and Alex is right. He wants to, and Richard is right. He wants to eliminate Ukraine. Uh, that is uh, that's an obsession with him. That's what mm. seems to be going on in his head. So he won't stop until he is he is persuaded. He is shown. He is convinced that he cannot win. Um, and that's why we need to continue to support the Ukrainians so that they can continue to fight. Ukrainians don't want our soldiers. They want our weapons. They want our tools. They want our tanks. They want our aircraft. They don't want our pilots. They, they don't want our soldiers. They want our tanks and aircraft. If we can give them that, they can convince Vladimir Putin that he cannot win. The U.S. has committed to continued aid, um, Alex, along with the international community as well that we just heard at the Munich Security Conference. Um, Vice President Harris had a pretty damning uh, speech there as well, saying that Russia has committed war crimes and those responsible will, in fact, be held to account. How does that happen? Yeah. So one of the things that we, we started this conversation with is this notion of surprises. What surprised me is how slow U.S. support has been to Ukraine, not recognizing the long-term risks. I think there were multiple points in this past year that if Putin kept absorbing blows, his military kept losing territory quickly, a high Mars arrived earlier, artillery arrived earlier, planes were given to Ukraine, we could see him already be on the kind of negotiation phase of this war. He is not yet there. Eventually, he's going to lose enough ground, enough personnel where he gets there. But it's going to take quite some time. And he could get accustomed to this, uh, this idea of losing territory, losing personnel, and feeding in his country of 140 million people additional resources. And that's what uh, concerns me, is that the longer this war goes, the harder it's going to, going to be to convince him to accept that he's lost. it's a lost cause. And he, in order to preserve his regime, in order to save his own skin, that he needs to withdraw from Ukraine and live to fight another day in his mind. I think we're moving in that direction, but it's frankly too slow. And the rhetoric, uh, even the rhetoric out of Munich, doesn't necessarily match the actions. Uh, we're getting there, but it's, yeah. it's taking too long. We have much more on this conversation um, ahead. Alexander Vimman, thank you. Ambassador Taylor, um, thank you as well.